All right, Schlagmeister fans, kind of a horror classic, and by request, it's When a Stranger Calls. Let's check it out. Carol Kane plays Jill, a babysitter. Her first phone call of the night. Bobby? What? The calls keep coming. Hello. She calls the police. It's a man. I think he's trying to scare me. Charles Durning. Not to worry, that's the cop. I'm still upstairs in the kid's bed. He was covered with blood. Blood? Not his own. Children have been dead for several hours. Fast forward seven, seven years. A state mental institution where the security is less than perfect. He escapes. You at all, you've done your job right. Now, Officer this Clifford is retired, but he's allegedly been hired by the family to find him now that he's escaped. And that's the doctor. And there he is. His name is Kurt Duncan, and he's out. What you been up to? My own business. He ends up getting into a fight in that bar, getting the crap beat out of him. Who are you calling? We're tracking someone. Fantastic. Cliff, fantastic. I knew you could do it. <laughs> Keep up the good work. It's Kirk Duncan. The woman in the bar, he kind of followed her home and uh, I came right in. Get some coffee. No, I don't think so. She's not interested, but she doesn't really, like, order him out. Next day, Clifford interviews her. He's tracking him, obviously. He's escaped from the insane asylum. Seven years ago, he murdered two children. He has other plans for him, though. I'm going to kill him, Charlie. What are you going to use? Block needles. So he's a hitman now. So he's working with that woman now, Tracy is her name, I believe. Kind of using her as bait to see if uh, he can catch Mr. Duncan. Not today. Although, perhaps he almost did. I, I must talk to you. Well, she starts screaming and Officer Clifford hasn't gone too far away yet, so... Unfortunately, by the time he gets in there, Duncan has escaped. He's in a homeless shelter now, and I guess he's having some flashbacks to those kids he killed, and he has some sort of freak out in the bathroom here. Officer Clifford, in fact, is looking through the homeless shelters, checking out every face he can find in there. And he's got the right one. Right place, anyway. A private detective. Alexander Mandragas to take you back. He pops out. Alright. Clifford is hiding some sort of poison needle behind him, which he's gonna toss, but he misses. 
Which of course allows Duncan to escape. Meanwhile, remember Jill? Carol Kane? She's got kids of her own now. So history is repeating itself, perhaps? They got a babysitter and they're going out. Oh, he gets the number at the restaurant. So they go home, the police are there, checks on her own kids just in case. And they're fine. But that night, she hears some whispering in her own house. And the whispering is very close, actually, closer than she thinks. Where is her husband? Did he shoot her? Nope! Somehow Clifford got in the house. There's her husband. Not to worry, he's just knocked out. And that's our movie. Alright, by request, let's talk about When a Stranger Calls. Now, I don't know if you can call this movie a classic. I guess it kind of is a classic horror. It's not an 80s horror. It was actually came out in 1979. Um, because I don't know, in, in terms of a classic, I don't know how good it actually is. The first 20 minutes are very good, actually. I actually became aware of this movie from um, Terror in the Isles, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. It was a show that came out, a movie that came out in 1983, I think, um, where they showed clips of all kinds of horror movies. I remember watching that on cable, taped it at the time, and thought, wow, that's, that's a great thing, because they were showing all these clips of these movies. I didn't know what they were, but I had to try to figure out, and I had Leonard Maltin's movie book, I was looking at the movies, listening to the credits, trying to match them all up. And one of the movies they fe featured in there was When a Stranger Calls. And the idea of, um, of a killer calling from inside the house was pretty cool. I don't think I had seen Black Christmas yet, although I saw it somewhere around that time also. But anyway, so the first 20 minutes, obviously, are the highlight of the movie. Carol Kane is a babysitter, probably maybe 20 years old, 18, 19, I don't know, who knows. She's doing homework. The kids are upstairs sleeping, and she keeps getting calls saying, have you checked the children? Have you checked the children? She thinks it's a prank call at first, but then they get kind of creepy. At one point, he says, I want to see your blood all over me. Um, she calls the police. Eventually, at one point, the police call back and said, you know, get out of the house. The call is coming from inside the house. Apparently, they had a second line. So she starts to go towards the door. Then we see some movement upstairs. Um, she's freaking out. She manages to get outside, and Charles Durning is out there. He's the cop. We find out that this killer had been upstairs and he had killed the two kids uh, with his bare hands, apparently. Fast forward seven years later, this guy had been in a mental institution for these seven years, and he escaped. Charles Durning is now retired, but he decides he's going to go to try to find this guy on his own. I think he was hired by the family of the murdered kids to find this guy. So that's what he does. And uh, he chases all over town for him, and this guy is out there. He's looking... Uh, he, at one point, he goes into a bar. He tried to pick up a woman. He gets beat up. Um, Durning is following him all over the place, trying to find him, going to homeless shelters and that sort of thing. And he actually gets close a couple of times. Um, gets really close one time in the homeless shelter, but he managed to escape before he caught him. Next thing you know, we see Carol Kane again, who plays Jill, the babysitter from the beginning of the movie. Seven years later, she's now married and has two kids of her own, who are probably about six or seven, so I guess she got busy right away. Um, and history is kind of repeating itself. Her and her husband are going out to dinner. They got a babysitter for the night. While she's at the restaurant, how this guy pulled it off, I don't know. Uh, but she gets a call at the restaurant, and as soon as she picks it up, she's like, hello? And the guy's like, have you checked the children? And she recognizes the voice, obviously, from this terrible event seven years earlier. She freaks out. She screams. Um, they go back home. The police are there. They check it out. The kids are fine. <coughs> Excuse me. But that night, she is in her bed. She hears some whispering, and um, she tries to get her husband who's next to her, but it's not her husband. It's Kurt Duncan, the killer. He jumps up and tries to attack her, and um, before he's able to kill her, though, Charles Durning somehow got into the house, broken out, and only shot him, and that's the end of Kurt Duncan. And then her husband actually was in the closet, knocked out by this guy. A little implausible, yeah, but that's the end of our movie, and there you go. Now, they did make a sequel to this, When a Stranger Calls Back, which I also have. I haven't seen that in a long time, and I think Carol Kane was in that one, too. 
And then they made a remake in 2006, which I have not seen. But anyway, I do enjoy this film. Uh, it's a little implausible, of course it is. But the first 20 minutes are great. Critics didn't think all that much of it. But again, I like the first 20 minutes. I thought that was really cool. But definitely the height of the movie. The director of this um, had made a short film about 20 minutes long called The Sitter. And that's where this came from. Now, interestingly, The, the Sitter, which is... um. It's listen to IMDb. I've never seen it. To my knowledge, it's not available anywhere. There's like one person who's reviewed it. I'd like to see it. So if anybody knows where the sitter is, is it online? Is it on YouTube? I don't know. I didn't look, but I would like to see the comparison. So anyway, that is it. It's one of Stranger Calls. I, I do recommend it. I think it's decent. I'll leave a link down below to the Blu-ray if you're looking for it. Blu-ray is really cheap, by the way. I think it comes with Happy Birthday to Me on it also. So pretty good for six or seven bucks. So check it out. Leave some comments. Let me know what you think about it. It's when a Stranger Calls. Watch it. Bye.